to the points of interest podcast this is the most generic podcast on the internet my name is josh hawks i am the 303 ninja and right over there he is my podcasting partner for life he is the other guy it's mr francis fernandez happy presidential debate tuesday yes thanks for uh joining us instead of the circus that's happening on 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 the tvs right now uh you know it really you know if you think about it francis uh in the amount of time that we'll be here jerking off on the internet they'll be jerking off in front of millions of people and at least we'll have something to you know show for it at the end of it will we will we i mean it'll be an episode with a, with a number and a, a title that's true <laughs> I, I can't argue that. That's true. That's true. How's it going? Hey, hey, push. Hey, let's push. Get it, let's get it on. <laughs> on a Tuesday. I mean, it's I mean, best the, Adam Carolla. Sorry. No. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, it's it's uh, it's Titty Tuesday, I guess. Fridays. Hmm. What's his name? Howard Stern. We got him on a Friday. Show the show the man what that what your what your packing. I mean, well, we do this, you know, without right. pants on, but that uh, would that no, would break some sort of. Like, is this... You know, if we were to stand up, that would break some sort of. Oh no, you're muted. I can't hear you. What do you mean I'm muted? I'm not muted. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Maybe it's me. I'm muted. Maybe I'm muted accidentally. Everything everything says active what do you mean start though huh it's a good start can you not hear me what the fuck actually push can you hear both of us while we're doing this can you hear us both because i can't hear josh but he can hear me apparently yeah i can't hear him maybe it's my audio i muted accidentally oh geez man keep talking josh so we hear you you just me Keep talking, Josh. I, I'm talking. Can you not hear me? Why did you mute your stuff? What What is going on? You always blame me for everything. But this time, it's you. And if that wouldn't make sense. if How would you mute me? That doesn't make sense. Um, well, well, friends, now, now it says, oh, see, now you're unmuted. It, now, now it says you can't talk. Now it says you can. What's going on? What are you doing? Just keep talking. I'm trying. Okay, so uh, while he tries to figure out his life, um, <laughs> what's that? Just keep talking. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming to this mess. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the debate would be better. Uh, but you know, we're here. We weren't here last week because you know work. Work gets in the way a lot. So we had a delay. Um, are you back? Can you hear me? I'll be right back. Oh, he said he'll be right back. Apparently he'll just be right back. Okay. So what's up push? Uh, <laughs> this is different. Well, uh, everything I want to talk about, I have to bounce off of Francis with. So, um, what do you want to talk about? What should we talk about? Um, Yeah. Well, shit. All right. Well, I guess until he comes back, we can just um, go off the cuff. The debates. Uh, we can. Uh, I don't participate much in politics, to be honest with you. Um, actually, here I'll show. I will show you my my uh, uh, political stance uh, for this year. So let, give me one second while I stand up and and you know not show that I'm not wearing pants. Hang on one sec. So there you go. I haven't seen the new Beetlejuice movie yet. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, as they call it. Uh, I believe Francis has. I could be mistaken on that. Um, Interested to see it, though. I I always enjoyed the first one. Michael Keaton is a great actor. Um, There you go. And I can hear you. I don't see you, but I can hear you. Now it works. 
Yeah, yeah. Thank uh, you, thank you uh, Discord, for messing up like that. Yeah, hey, well. That's cool, man. Uh, Hurricane Francine, is that the most current hurricane that's about to wreak hack, possible havoc? I haven't, I haven't kept up on much recently. My job, uh, that job has me all over the place and fighting people from ages 17 up to 60. It's, it's, uh, it's going to hit the Gulf Coast. Okay. It's going up through Louisiana. So have fun hurricaning. <laughs> have fun hurricaning. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry anyway. About that. That's all right. Quick restart of this of this of the system. No, oh, well, it happened. I I didn't know what to do because like everything I have written down, I really need you know someone to talk to about. So I I I, I was sitting there dog paddling and, and and almost drowning. That's why you see all these these topics that are popping up in the chat. Thanks to push. Um, push. yes, thank you. All right, so yes, the debate is happening. Thank you for choosing us. Let's start that part over again. Um, but, um, you know, something that might be, oh, look at this, uh, something that might be a topic of the debate tonight. Um, what is it? And yes, I am okay. Thank you. <laughs> no, fine, fine. <laughs> um, it might, it might've come up, who knows, but, um, the city in which I live in, according to social media has been run, run over, run through, run, 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 run. Uh, like a dagger. Yes, uh, by a Venezuelan gang, which I can't remember. It's Trey something or other. Um, the Three Amigo Gang, let's call it that. Um, yeah. Well, there's Trey in the name. Uh, so I, I don't... <sighs> Protecting kayfabe. Uh, some of the people that I've had to escort or attempt to escort recently um and the ones that we have been able to escort have been in uh, venezuelan descent so i can't even talk about this without <laughs> all right so i stopped shop i stopped shoplifters it's all we gotta go we don't have to go much further than that i stopped shoplifters um and i've had to deal with a lot of people that all look very similar, which you're not supposed you know, I, I, I don't, I don't assume anybody's nationality until I sit them down and ask them or try and get some information. Like I said, the few that we have been able to stop and sit down, they let us know that they are Venezuelan. So it's happening. It, it does happen a lot. There's a lot of shoplifting that's happening with people of that descent. I'm trying to skirt this so fucking in the middle of the road as I can. You know, you know. <laughs> um, you know. So I haven't, I haven't been in this profession for a long time. I used to do it a long time ago, but I haven't been doing it the whole time. So I can't say that there's an influx, but from the data and the information I'm getting from my coworkers says that, yes, that is in fact, the influx that we are seeing. I personally can't say it's gang related because we've not been met with any gang activity. I've had what, okay. signs thrown at me. Right. I've had people saying a lot of stuff in Spanish and I don't speak Spanish or understand it. So it doesn't mean anything to me with their mean faces that they say it with. Um, so it's a thing. Apparently a, a couple of apartment complexes are on the verge or have shut down because of living, living conditions, possibly as a result of Venezuelan gang takeovers. But I personally can only speak on what I see. And there's a lot of people. There's not a lot. There's a pocket of people that are stealing that we stop a lot of the time. Well, you don't have to tiptoe around it because 
the city of Aurora confirms. <laughs> that oh, okay. An influx. Yeah. So, I mean, Colorado is a uh, a sanctuary state, um, which you know I don't have an issue with. Uh, I have an issue with shoplifting because that's my profession that I chose to be in right now. I mean, if I have to deal with you know sometimes the same people, you just see them in different stores. It's like, oh, we stopped. We tried stopping this guy a month ago in this other store. He's in this store now. Big surprise. Um, so, you know, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. And, and then, to, and yeah. the, the big thing I think that that blew up all over the internet last week is that uh, supposedly the Hell's Angels were on their way from planet Hell's Angel or wherever Hell's Angel. Apparently, they all live in one central location according to these posts and they all ride in big motorcycle trains. Yeah. I thought they were uh, LA based. I don't, dude, I Hell, don't Hell's Angels I think oh. are all over the country. It is an international club but I, I think yeah they're founded in, in, uh, okay. in LA. So they're founded here. Yeah. Okay but not all the Hell's Angels of America no, 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 live no. in LA. But the, according to all the social media posts, if you were to look into them, it just looks like, because every one of them that you saw, saw a train of bikers all on big Harley looking bikes, riding in pairs, rolling down an undescript road that don't even look like Hell's Angels. Like you don't see red berets and shit on anybody. And I don't know if that's, no, that's, that's. Red, Hell's Angels don't wear red berets. Although that would be funny. Who are the guys that wear fucking red berets that walk streets? They're like vigilantes or something. Oh, I, can't no, think, I, don't, I, don't. I can't think what they're called. I dropped my pen. Um, yeah. Go on. I forgot what I was, what I was talking about. That's okay. Uh, according to Denver 7 ABC News... Hell's Angels are not coming to uh, Denver. Uh, the biker club says that's absolutely ridiculous. As they, as uh, the rumor was, they were preparing to confront the Tren de Arugua. Okay, so maybe there Aurora. isn't. Maybe is there's an S there, isn't it? T R E A or T R E S or something. No, like that? it's T R E N de no. uh, Aragua. Okay. But uh, I, I yes, I'm gonna, really, I, I'm, it, later I'm going to get a translation on that because because I want to I want to make fun of it. It's just a rumor. It's just a rumor. Yeah, they're not yeah. coming. Uh, I mean, we have our own. Are we have our own gangs here, so like we, I, I don't know why they would, you know, an international motorcycle club or MC, as you're supposed to say it. Uh, would come. Yeah, they're the HAMC. So yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why they the would. The Hell's Angels are the HAMC. Yeah, I don't know why they would congregate someplace and then come to Colorado. I don't know why they. You know. They're like the AARP, just for bikers. <laughs> I'm. Well, yeah. Just, a lot of them look. Bag. A lot of them look like they could be in AARP. Yeah, you get a tote bag and like a like a thermos for joining. Oh yeah. That you could put like in your little cup holder on your bike. To go along with your tassels, because that's what makes all tough people look tough, or tassels on their bikes. That little bell. That little bell. <laughs> bring, 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 bring. I think if I ever, if I ever got like a, a small motorcycle, like a, like a Grom or something like that, I would, I would put a little bike, <laughs> bike bell on it. I think that would, yeah. uh, that maybe an air horn, like a disposable, you know, um, like zip tie, a, a can, canned air horn no, to no, the. It's like a cup holder, but it only fits air horns. Well, there you go. <laughs> and yeah, you can just press the button, and it'll air horn and play La Cucaracha every time you go down into a neighborhood. So, speaking of La Cucaracha, uh, okay, my very very first car that I got in yes. 1995 was a 1972. Dodge Charger. Yes. 
when I after I took possession of it, I said I didn't. It's the very first car I, I ever bought. I didn't buy it with any parental supervision or or permission or anything. I just went and bought a car. Had air horns. I was like, oh, that's cool. Go into the steering, hit the steering wheel. Little horn button doesn't work. And I'm not an electrician, and I was 16, 17 at the time, so I definitely wasn't going to try and fix it. But one day, one of my buddies, who was older <clears throat> and understood electronics, was like, let's hook up these air horns. You got, you got a huge, loud car. Let's make it even more obnoxious and get these air horns to work. So hooked them up, and they played the Dukes of Hazard. Uh horn because i mean it basically was the deuce of hazard car but it reminded me a little cucaracha it kind of goes hand in hand I think. yeah I they're like similar they hand they're hand similar the same kind of same kind of something that note family right yeah Okay. Yeah, I, I, I just thought it was rad. The original color of the car was that same burnt orange of the Dukes of Hazard of the General Lee. Uh, the passenger, when I bought it, the passenger door didn't open, so you had to go through the window. It had a chrome foot, the, a pedal in the shape of a chrome foot for a gas pedal. Oh. It had a nine inch steering wheel, so like a, you might see like on a low rider. And then I put no power in power steering. No, I mean it had vacuum power steering. So as long as the engine was running, you had some power steering, right. some power brakes. But they both ran off vacuum. Uh, and then it, it had no like uh, button or handle for the gear shifter. It just had a raw stick hanging out of the fucking transmit out of the floor. She had to just, I, I built a callus on the palm of my hand, not for being a teenager and jerking off all the time, but from shifting into drive and park because it was just, there's no button, no, no handle, no, not, it was just, I don't know how to explain it. Why just would a, it be a button? Well, cause it was like originally, I think it was a, uh, they called it a pistol grip. So it was like a the automatic oh, kits came yeah. out of the floor and I had a trigger to push and that would push down on this rod to select the gear. Or if it wasn't that, it was a T bar that had a button that when you push the button would depress the, the, the shaft. Well, I didn't have a handle and I wasn't smart enough to know how to put one on, so I just raw dog the transmission every day. The good old days, I guess. The good old days, yep. They, they really were the good old days, man. That car that car taught me everything I needed to know about car control. It was a 1970s yeah, rear-wheel drive with barely any power steering or power brakes. Did, wait, so when you were when you were learning how to, when you did the test, mm -hmm. you had to, like, reverse, right? Like, you had to do a parallel park, like a, like a fake parallel park? No. No, my driving test consisted of driving around the block, changing lanes, and parking just into a spot. God, I wish I had that. Oh, that's so much easier. I wish they had, you know, thrown me on the freeway. I wish they had done parallel parking. I wish it was the stuff that they taught and tested on because that would Maybe have saved my tires and my suspension of my car from mounting curbs to fall off the curb to parallel park because I would just drive into the, par the spot, mount the curb. Oh, you went, you went, you I went forward, yeah. Way. And then it would just cut and then, you know, fall off the curb and be like, I'm parked. Okay, yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, and when, you're, when yeah. Your, your Dodge Charger is raked four to six inches in the back, drops your front end to the about, you know, what was it? two cigarette packs high off the ground. Yeah. I did a lot of scraping. I don't know. <laughs> I can imagine. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah, because that's we. I had to do that. 
part of my all of my it was parallel parking going onto the freeway all that good stuff yeah I, that was the, the fun stuff changing lanes I, I i i almost got marked down for having the radio on i was like i'm so nervous i didn't even hear it <laughs> this is also this is my dad's car i don't want to break it He's already going to be mad I moved his seat. Good idea. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, yeah. I, I went and got my uh, an alignment on my car last week. And when I went to get back into it, I couldn't because the seat was all the way forward because they hired a the munchkin to drive my car back into the, into the service area. <laughs> oh, no, you're frozen for a second. You're back. Really? Um, it, it's it's fine. You're good, I think. You're just choppy. Um, yeah. So that that was the my city was on Twitter segment and whatever else we just diatribed off onto. What's up with your world, Francis? Oh God, he's frozen. He's frozen again. I hate the internet. He can't hear me. Uh, oh, right when people come in. Oh, of course. Well, of course. Why? I mean, why wouldn't? Why wouldn't? Uh, why wouldn't they? They come in when they start and when things were good, and then they fell apart. They got to come in when things okay. were falling apart. What's funny is. Okay, so you're there. You are. You're on. Yeah. Okay. You basically have been the whole time. You're just you choppy as shit. Uh, uh, I see. I see you working. I see you on Twitch, which is funny. Like I see you, like, moving fine on Twitch, mm. but you're not doing anything on my Discord. <laughs> my Discord has you just frozen, just frozen still. I, I can't stand this. This is so stupid. But it's funny that I, I'm I'm seeing myself on Twitch and I'm like a robot. <laughs> like I'm a robot on Twitch for some reason. It's because the shitty internet at this house is just fucking I, and the the modem we're using is from fucking nineteen sixty five, I think. One day. One day you're gonna get better internet. One day. One day. I don't know when the fuck that's ever gonna be. But that's what always what the issue when, uh, is. That is what the issue is. Every fucking week. Every week. That you are watching this and we slow down or we go, oh shit, something happened. It's because the internet fucking sucks. And yet we persist. We do. Yeah, we keep going. We do. Yeah. Because we're uh, not dumb enough to stop, I guess. The show, well, it depends. If it gets, you know, we usually have a limit. That that is true. That is true, and I'm guessing people are showing up now because the the, the circus is over. It is. Yeah, yeah. that it's makes done. sense then. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so like, well, you've seen you've seen all we can see. Yeah. What else are we gonna do? <laughs> what? Let's uh, see what the what watch. else is going on in the world. Oh, these two idiots are talking about What's nothing. Guy doing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're talking about. Nothing. It's kind of like what we just watched for the last two hours. Yeah, we're, we're the Seinfeld of podcasts. Only we're funnier. Nothing. No. What, what's the deal with airline peanuts? Uh, what's the deal? Why can't that guy write a funny joke? What's the deal? Why was I a bee in love with a human woman? That was weird. Why did I hire a major racist on my show? It wasn't at the time. He always was. He wasn't while we were doing the He show. just wasn't outed as one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to... Wait, what does he say? He says something like... Well, he had like an apology tour, you know, after that. Sure. Was as, 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 they, as they do. As they do. I remember when Hulk Hogan, made it back. you know, went around and made his fake apologies. Well, Hulk Hogan is like, t is like the toughest thing on earth. 
because nothing can bring down the Hulkster. Nothing. Uh, like, male pattern can baldness can. can. But he's had male pattern baldness for like the last 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that motherfucker is bald, yet every time you see him on TV, his bandana has the same golden locks hanging out the back that he had in the 80s. I'm pretty sure he cut off the, the last bit of his golden locks and sewed them into his bandanas. Who did he, who is he, who, he, who, who did he sue again? He sued um, that, oh God, for the sex tape. <laughs> for when they released the sex tape. Yeah. Sued, uh, oh, um. Collider? Giga, no. Giga bit, Giga. Anyway, whatever he sued like a website, yeah, and that and they disappeared because he sued them for billions and he won. It's like the guy is just like, oh, who's playing him in a movie? Oh, who's playing him? In a movie? That oh, Chris Hemsworth was was oh, that's right put in that in that movie, but yeah. apparently it just got shit canned or it's in development hell. Something recently. It's in development hell. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, okay. the, the, Sorry. I'm just. That's fine. Uh, Netflix just announced. Speaking of wrestling stuff, Netflix just announced their uh, Vince McMahon documentary. That's been in the making for damn near four years, from what I've been told. Um, which it's just interesting that they announced it to debut at the end of this month, if I'm not mistaken. Um. Because starting next year, Raw, WWE Raw, is going to be on Netflix, live on Netflix every Monday. So it's just interesting that they they got this, you know, Vince McMahon documentary that, you know, about a, the, the outed, you know, CEO and owner and everything of WWE, the creator of it, basically. And they're going to have the, you know, I just wonder if it's going to damage the product. Is all. How much more damage can you do to that product, really? I mean, that's why they got rid of Vince. Vince has nothing to do yeah. with the company he started. As long as the walk is there, that's all. That, whoever, whatever happens on this, this. I mean, yeah. You'd world. have to look up, like I guess, on like TMZ or, or whatever gossip fucking outlets that are out there to see what he's up to nowadays to see if he does the walk in you know, no, no, normal so. civilian yeah. what it's a documentary right of him? yeah a documentary a about him oh. yes yes oh, oh okay so there's not going to be playing him it's just no like, it's a doc yeah it's a documentary like they have interviews with him up until his res resignation do you think i guess cares? Uh, the wrestling the wrestling world is pretty interested. Twitter, wrestling Twitter is pretty interested. Um, I'm mostly interested. I'm not sure how I'm going to, I don't have the Netflix. So like, I don't know if it's worth it to, to get Netflix for a month to watch a four part, five part docuseries. Or if, you know, maybe I can obtain it other, other ways. I, I've already watched Deadpool and Wolverine at home, so. Don't say that out loud. It's speculation. Oh, okay. It's a podcast. I could say all kinds of stuff. Satire, satire. Yes. Satire. Actually, it's actually kind of funny. I, um, a couple weeks ago, I don't know, three weeks ago, something like that, I, I was... You know, it, 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 it is officially my birthday week, Francis. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling I need to get myself something. But I'm also broke. So I got to, you know, be frugal. But I, I really want a Transformer of some sort, I said to myself. And when these type of things come up, the, these urges, a great place to go are these Chinese websites. Oh, God, no. No, it's, it's fine. Check this out. So I, on my search, I found a whole lot of stuff. I was like, oh, wow, let me, let me favorite these. I'm going to come back and visit these. Um, but I was on the search 
for a G1 knockoff version of Devastator. The, const- the Constructicons. Never had them as a kid. Never had them as a big kid. I'm a big adult. I, I, I think I deserve them. So I found, I found one for like $25. The, the quality is going to be shit. But I don't care. It's just supposed to stand on the shelf and look devastating. It's not meant to be like played with. So I, ordered, I thought I thought I ordered Devastator. I get my confirmation a couple days later. I get, hey, it's shipped. It's coming pretty quick. It's, it's kind of amazing from things of Chinese nature being shipped to you. Uh, and then I look at, look at the receipt. And I'm looking at the little thumbnail. And I'm like, wait a second. That's not green. That's like white and red. I didn't. I, didn't, I thought I ordered Devastator. Let, let me look. Oh, shit. Nope, you didn't order Devastator. You ordered another combiner set of the Autobot side of things, which is weird. I only have like two Autobots in my entire collection. Uh, but I, I now am the, well, tomorrow, apparently, I will be the proud owner of Superion, the Aerialbot combiner. It's cool. Never had that one either. But, you know, wasn't really what I was looking for, but it's cool. I'm going to keep it. It'll look cool on the shelf. But I really Thank wanted to. Thanks for reminding me. What's that? Expect stuff aren't coming. <laughs> <sighs> so thanks for reminding I, me. I, well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't say it for that, but thanks. Um, know, but still, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, so it... And I don't really, because, again, work, I don't really have anything really planned for the birthday stuff. Uh, my my lady and I are going to a mountain town next weekend for a little weekend getaway and concert. So that's kind of like the only... Hey, man, when you, when you, when you are dating a, a person that loves to go to concerts and has social anxiety and doesn't want to go by themselves... You go to a lot of concerts. Well, sure, yeah, <laughs> and willingly. I love I I love going to concerts. I don't care what the concert is. I love I love live music. This is fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I I I, I have a aerial bot combiner that uh, I I didn't think I ordered. But I did, so that's cool. Whatever. I've never. I don't think I've ever done that. Where I've accidentally bought something I didn't like. Like I don't think I've ever done that before. No, you like, like you, you thought you got, uh, you know, one thing, but you ended up with something else. I guess I don't know how. I don't know how. To, like, like, do they look the same? I don't think. I, I don't no. know what they look like. I guess that's what. So uh, the the listing. Where did I get it from? AliExpress? Um, Okay. The listing, the page that I ordered it from had, I believe, Devastator, Superion, Computron, Bruticus, and Predaking. All all combiners. And I thought I chose Devastator. But apparently I chose Superion. Instead, which is fine. Even it's it. Like I, I own Optimus, a, a couple different versions of Optimus, and one of Rodimus. Is it Rodimus? No, I have a Hot Rod. Outside of that, I don't really have any Autobots. My entire Transformer no. collection is basically all Decepticon. As I'm thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, I really don't have a lot of Autobots. <laughs> I mean, you you love you some uh, you, you love you some um, sound waves, so it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, uh, I already showed I already showed push my shirt. I'll show you. I'll show everybody else again since there's more people here. But you know, since the debate thing was happening today, 
I felt it was appropriate to wear my my political shirt for this year. So hang on one second. I got to make sure I don't stand up too high so you see I'm not wearing pants. But hang on. Yeah. Yes. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. I can't wait to hear Steve Buscemi as as Soundwave or as a uh, Starscream. Uh, speaking of which. It's funny because I, I just watched a thing of a guy who's been voicing Starscream for like the last like 30 years or something like that. He's like goofy looking dude. He like wore a, wore a top hat or some sort of like trimly or something like that. But when he was, they, it was, it was for this most recent 40th anniversary, I believe. Um, mm. I didn't get to go to it again because of fucking work. Uh, but what it was, was a, you watch the first three or four episodes of the series, but you're watching the table read of it. Oh, that's fun. So like on half the screen is, is the animation or, or in the corner you see Frank and, and whoever the star scream actor is and, and Peter doing all the different voices that they do for the cartoon. Um, obviously some people are dead, so they didn't bring them back, but they got other people to play good renditions of other characters. But it, it was cool. It was, I really wish I had gotten to go to the theater and see it as opposed to watching short clips on YouTube. But what can you do? When did this happen? Uh, this past, the, the, early this summer. Well, okay. okay. I think last year was, I, last year was the anniversary of the movie, and then this year was the anniversary of just Transformers, period. I'm not 100% sure. Hey, in a few weeks, though, Transformers won. Yes. And I didn't get to go to the, the press screening of that because I forgot yeah, what day it was. It, like, I have to watch it with all the normies. Um, yeah. But I'm looking forward to it. I, the, the reviews haven't been glowing by any means, but I think you know a lot of the people that went and saw it, that, that got to see it early are too balls deep into Transformers lore. To accept any new lore. Okay. I'm guessing. I don't know. I just I've seen some people that were just like just they blew the whole film off. You know, like they don't want to watch a a buddy cop movie with Transformers in it. It's just it's it's more Transformers. Like just be happy. It's more Transformers. It's more Transformers that look like G one. Which is what hardcore Transformer fans want. They don't want Michael Bay yeah. robots and, and design. Yeah. They want they want Bumblebee to be a fucking VW bug that talks, doesn't speak through Universal movie owned lines. I get. I know you're you're a Bumblebee fan. I'm not. I am a Bumblebee, but I mean, you know. if you go back, it's funny. If you go back and look at the first couple episodes of the of the cartoon, it looks like I think it's Wheeljack and Spike look like they're gonna be friends, and then by like the fourth or fifth episode, it's all just Bumblebee and Spike. He was the he was the fan favorite. Yeah, everyone yeah. loves Bumblebee. He's the fan favorite. I'm just I'm just not a Bumblebee fan. Clearly, I mean, I don't even I barely own any Autobots, so. Well, that I mean, evil will always triumph because good is dumb. Because good is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd get an Optimus if you can get an Optimus. I have. I have. I'm pretty uh, sure. I can. have the reissue, the G1 reissue. reissue uh, that was the, the Walmart exclusive. I only have the cab. I don't have the trailer. Um, I have, they called it uh, the Masterpiece series that came out. I have the Optimus of that. That's like, 
it's all metal and huge and heavy. You can use it as a weapon. And it came with the energy axe and the matrix of leadership and a miniature version of Megatron in gun and gun form, which was perfectly proportioned to fit in my super articulated Spider-Man's hand. So on my mantle, when I had all my toys displayed, Spider-Man was holding Megatron gangster style sideways while throwing East side with his other hand. I mean, right? His hands were like this, right? No, oh, well, yes. yeah. No, his hand, the, but this toy had fully articulated hands. Oh. The, this, this, wow. it, the Spider-Man came out around the same time as, uh, uh, Sam Raimi? Is that, that's right? Sam Raimi? Uh, Spider-Man 2. I can't think of the actor's name who played him right now. Tobey Maguire. To- Tobey Maguire. The second Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie is when this super articulated 18 to 24 inch Spider-Man that had 128 points of articulation. It was awesome. It is awesome. It, it's not past tense. It still is awesome. It's just... It's awesome. It's yeah. in a box. <laughs> hidden away from light yeah. and, and dust and everything else. Maybe one day I can grow up and have my own place to stay with a shelving unit I can actually display things on. And, and good internet. And good Yeah. <laughs> Won't have any furniture, but I'll have really great internet. That, that's like the, that's like the meme, the, the online meme is like all guys need, mm-hmm. and it'll show a picture, yeah, of, of a, TV. a camping chair, a TV on like a like yeah. a uh, like a, on a on a director's chair or something like that, or like on top of some pizza boxes. Yeah, or something. yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I I can't I can't really you know, past judgment or anything because for years, years, my TV sat on a coffee table that somebody gave me. I don't even, I think it's part of a drawer that the face broke off the face and the back broke off of at some point, but it's made us some pretty, pretty good, like MDF. So I use it as a, a riser for my TV. So, you know, it's only like, I don't know, Four inches high, but four inches makes a difference. <laughs> I'm just gonna give my, I'm just gonna give my uh-huh face. Uh, mm-hmm. You have to you have to give me some credit for my childish humor. Um, but yeah, it, it's. I mean, I'd much rather have my TV mounted on the wall. But again, we go back to um, I don't do electronics, nor do I do mechanical things either. I wouldn't trust myself to find a load bearing, you know, like stud and like make sure it stayed put. And right. Like, I, I feel like I would I would put it into the regular drywall. And the moment I put the TV on, oh, <laughs> just wild. rip a whole hole, uh, a hole in the wall. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was very ambitious when I first moved in here. I wouldn't even bought a stud finder. You know, I even did the thing where it's like, I can't find anything. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Found me. It's, you have to do that when you get a stud finder. We all did that. No, we all did that. I, 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 I will admit we all did that. And and my my best friend who builds houses for a living, would you, I told him, I'm like, yeah, I bought a stud finder and marked things off. And he's like, why didn't you just measure X amount of inches off the wall? And I'm like, because I don't own a tape measure. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> and also, I don't know what that is. I, I, you, I just said this thing's like four inches high. It's probably more than that. I don't understand fucking measurements and distance. Right. Who does really? Well, Everything's an estimate, you know. Everything's just made up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Everybody As breaks my balls all the time about like, like, oh, it's ninety-three degrees out. I'm like, actually, well, I mean. 
It sounds better if you say it's 33. Like, what the fuck? You, oh, you, like, Celsius guy. The Celsius temperature, man. It just, you know. Is it, but it's all made <laughs> up. It? Does it really matter if someone's in Celsius or Fahrenheit or centimeters and inches? Does it really matter? You're not going to understand no. each other, but, you know. It's all made up anyway. Yeah. Hey, again, we measure distance by, I mean, I measure distance by time. I don't, I don't say mm. you're an X number of miles away. You're 10 minutes away. Sure. You're not. I mean, it, not well, what we both live, I mean, you live in a much bigger city, you know, in the, in the sense of what people picture as a big city than I do. Gale, yeah. But when you, when you, you, call up your 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 Google Maps or your Waze or whatever GPS tracking system direction service giving thing you use and the location that you're going to is only five miles away yet the time in, that it takes to get there in your head you're like five miles that's nothing why is it taking me 45 minutes to get there it's five miles that's how I look at things. I'm like, I get confused more of more than like distance is time. Yes. But I'm just like, why? How? I feel like I could run there in five miles. Well, uh, push if you're still around, uh, go bots should have, I mean, never, I, mm. I don't know why we don't pay attention to chat. Like well, screen. but well, while a lot of this was there while you weren't, he was trying to feed me stuff to talk about. Well, he mentioned GoBots. Uh, yes, should have made a made a return, made, made a reboot. Um, they tried. Um, Hasbro bought they, they the tried. licensing for the GoBots, so they own Transformers and GoBots. And then they used the the name of the line. I don't. I can't remember if they reused any of the names of the GoBots. But during the Transformers Generation 2 era that nobody liked, there was a series that came out called The GoBots. And I believe they were the old pullback racer cars. You remember those? Like from the, like the penny racer style? Yes. You pull the car back and release? I think they were like that, but they were... Very simple and well, they like, were to they were even in the cartoon. They were toys. Like GoBots are just toys. They're not like robots and the sky. Or they're not cars or like no anything complex. Well, no, they're just but the story was complex. We were just too young to understand it. They were all cyborgs. So. Yes, they were. they were all humans that gave up their their biological bodies and put their brains into robots. Um, yeah, where do you yes. go from that? I don't know. I'm a little, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at, I, I looked up GoBots just to see, like, oh, GoBots. Okay. I hope you kept them. They're worth a lot of money. In in one of the the mini boxes of of toys that my, my brother and I had, um, I'm sure there's still a couple floating GoBots in some of the boxes. Um, I know that I had the space shuttle. I don't remember what the character's name is, but it was, it looked like a, Buster. was it? It looked like the Columbia or the oh, challenger, maybe. like a, like I'll a, no like a space one. shuttle. Um, I believe there's a red car. Turbo, yeah. maybe, was the name. Maybe. And then there was a big play set that was a giant robot, like a walker that could you could stand up that, like, was gray and red. Had that, and then this I... This is not what I'm looking at. And then there was licensed as a GoBot, but I don't believe... I don't remember where the toy originally came from, but it was a cap gun that would turn into a really ugly looking robot. 
But it was like a rifle. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, look. In comparison, GoBots are the ugly robots compared to Transformers. Oh, totally. GoBots are the but secondhand. Interestingly enough, GoBots were on the market first by like a couple months. Yeah. It's just that the marketing yeah. was so much better for the Transformers. I, I think marketing for Transformers started like three months before the first comic book or cartoon ever was released. Well, I need to borrow $1,200 to get the Thruster Renegade GoBot headquarters. It's only $1,200 on Amazon. There's only one left. Only one left. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I never thought about, like, I really wish I had kept my toys. Obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty. But man, yes. I wish I, I had. I had all of these toys. I had all of these freaking toys that are like worth so much money now, you know. And I sold them at a, at a, you know, at, at like eleven or twelve years old. I sold them at like flea markets and like mm. garage sales because I wanted the you know the five bucks I was gonna get for, the, you know the the Batmobile playset or the Batmobile, uh, sixty six Batmobile that I had. Which is now like three hundred dollars for the Batmobile. Oh, yeah. for that 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 like, car. I'm like, I had that. I freaking had that. I had the <laughs> turtle van, which is also worth money. I had that. I had all of this stuff. Like I had all of these toys. And I just threw them away. I, I have. Away. I have an old <laughs> former former friend. I guess he's more just an acquaintance nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, but he hasn't worked, to my knowledge. So I'm taking some liberties here, but to my knowledge, he hasn't worked in the last 20 years and he, he's able to survive and thrive really on selling his toy collection. I remember 20 years ago helping him organize what he had and because he was selling some of it then. And it was like the entire basement of this house was just nothing but full of boxes of toys, tables full of toys, you know, all loose, but still worth something. And this is crazy. I like, like I said, I don't have much contact to any contact with this guy anymore, but right. other friends of mine do. And they are all like, yeah, he's still just selling his, his collection off. I mean, can't take it with you. No, you right. can't. You, you can't. Money now. So. I mean, I I had friends point. that you know Here sold it. their collections and sent their kids to college. At least for what did, uh, you know a couple semesters. I mean, nobody. No, I don't have any friends, or had any friends that had collections. Well, I guess I do have a former friend that has a collection that he can survive off of. But most everybody else, they. They they one shotted their entire you know they just lauded their entire collection to one person, and took the check and ran. I have, I have one collection left. Yeah, one collection left of old, of eighties and nineties, well mostly eighties, baseball, basketball, and football cards. Well, we need to go to a Hoff sports card event. Not a non-sports oh, card event, but a Hoff sports no, no, card no, no, event. Sports card, yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a draw. A pull, what do you call it? A, a callback from four years ago. <laughs> at least, at least, at least. Uh, yeah. It's funny because I was just talking to somebody today about WonderCon and how I really need to get back there next year. Um. Oh, yeah, it, cons, it really Jesus. All these cons, man. I don't know. Uh, anyway. but yeah, toy toys are are kind of a. I didn't even have any of this toy stuff written down. It's kind of nice that we just fell onto this, yeah. but it, they're always it's always been a source of inner child happiness, I guess. Well, that's where we found our joy was with those toys that's that's 
And, and it, sometimes, yeah, I mean, I have replaced toys that I had as a kid that I might still have. They're just buried in a box somewhere. But I'm an adult now, and I don't really play with them. I just, I have them to have them. Well, as you get older, toys become displays. You don't play with them. Mm -hmm. You show them off so that other people can be like, you have that? Wow. Oh, God. So when you invite other people over, they go, Jesus Christ, I thought you were an adult. <laughs> yes, and yeah, no, you're not wrong. I feel, I feel like... Yeah, I, I go to I people's like, houses and they have like art on their walls or they have a good feng shui or they have like a very domesticated kind of thing going on. And every apartment I've had on my own, I've, I've rented a house with a girlfriend. Every, every opportunity I've had, I've displayed toys. I've displayed video game stuff. I've displayed Irish flags, you know, like, <clears throat> yeah, that's... the only thing I'm missing is, like, every monster I've ever drank, you know, on my mantle or something, or every bottle of alcohol I've ever had. I remember I went to this, I remember distinctly, I went to this guy's, uh, it was in either an apartment or a house, it must have been a house, and their ceiling was covered in bottle caps of the drinks that they drank. All of like the beers and all of the that they just like, like pushed just, into the drywall. Yeah, they pushed it into the well. They pushed it into the popcorn. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the asbestos. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah, so they just they just pushed it up there, and it, it just they didn't even make a pattern. It was just like a circle of like bottle caps for some reason. It's like okay, I guess that's cool. <laughs> like, I I. I I've never understood the, the the keeping of a can or a bottle of anything. Once it's empty, it's it's rubbish. It's trash. It's recyclable. Um, it's. I still have my Coca Cola can from Japan. I still have my like. I still have stuff from like places I've been to that I feel like. Uh, I say I. This is kind of... I say that, and I as I think about it and reflect on my own self i have shell casings from a gun i shot in downtown denver in a building that wasn't a shooting range i won't get into the details of that but i kept the shell casings as evidence <laughs> no um but it's like memory yeah they're me the memories that i mean nobody I, if i tell any I shot a gun in a, in a, in a, inside of a building in downtown that wasn't a, a shooting range in the yeah, basement of a building. That's, no, I mean, like, it wasn't at anybody. You know, it was just shooting a gun where you're not supposed to. And I kept the shells just because I was like, I did something and I just wanted to keep that. Here's the thing. I would too. I yeah. would too. I have. A. Go ahead. Yeah. I was just say A, it's a memory. B, it's erasing evidence. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, because like we shot the gun into phone books, and you know we just threw those away. Yeah, yeah. that's what you get. When, so that's what you get when you hang out with questionable people. Um, degenerates, degenerates. Yeah, well, you know, I was a really good kid till I got friends. So I met my best friend. That's the worst. <laughs> that's the worst part. Friends are the worst part. They, they, they. Yes, yeah. Peer pressure is a motherfucker. Um, Oh, yeah. What else, what else do I have here? Uh, so, uh, uh, I mean, we're already cooking on time here, but let's let's try and get through what I have written down. So, what's you know, what's topical, I guess. Uh, sadly, James Earl Jones died yesterday. Um, the voice of Darth Vader and, and Mustafa and Mustafa again and Mufasa, Mufasa not Mustafa, Mufasa, Mufasa, and Mufasa again and. Uh, uh, um, um, the the king from coming to America. He did that twice, and uh, he was on that super pandering nerd show that I can't remember the name of. He wasn't Big Pink Theory. Yeah. Fix your camera. You're all out of focus. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Um. Yeah. Sadly, he passed uh, yesterday. I don't like that. He died yesterday. And why do people always soften that? He passed I mean, away. 
He died. I mean, sure. I don't know. Well, oh. uh, euphemisms. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it, I mean, it, I was unaware of how much stage work he had done. Yeah. I, I thought he was more of just a, a movie actor guy. Um, in, in TV, I guess, you know, big and small screen. I just wasn't aware of the stage presence and all the stage work that he had done. So the, the retrospectives that I watched last night and this morning, I was like, oh, that's, I didn't know that. That's really cool. Also that apparently he had a mad stutter. And you wouldn't know it. Never heard him stutter once in any line he ever gave. No, it was, I mean, he, he was the voice of CNN. He was the voice of, mm-hmm. uh, of so many different things. Like, yeah and uh you know it, it it i don't know it just it just reminds you of the passage of time because mm-hmm. you know who's next you know who's next in the star wars the world other no just these these voices these iconic voices that mm. when we hear them like yes morgan freeman is next because mm. <laughs> he's old he's yes really old. yes you know, you're not wrong the there. God is going to be like, mm. and we're going to be sad because he's again, he's got that very distinct voice. Yes, yes. Um, and and for his voice, I mean, as a he's he's, he's a great person from all, you know, everything you can you can read about yeah, the guy, exactly. and it, it's interesting in his case, you know, how late of a bloomer his popularity became, like. His first movie was in his forties, I think. Something like that. Like role was in his forties. Yeah. Same with uh, Samuel Jackson. I think his first role was in his late thirties. Yeah. So there's still hope for us, Francis. Sure. There's still hope for us. Uh, yeah. I don't know what we would do, but you know, there's still hope for us. Uh, but uh, I don't have a whole lot to say really about it. It's, it sucks. It's you know, it, it is a, re- no, no. a great reminder of the passage of time and an iconic voice you know i think going forward we're gonna have to find a new voice of darth vader if they choose to do anything else with darth vader there's plenty of people out there that are doing it for the video games and you know i guess you just do hayden christensen and just throw filters on his voice (laughs) since they kind of already reestablished that with with the obi-wan series I think, yeah, it's it's passage of time, but also, um, yeah, it's just, you know, they, these are icons, right? We're getting, I, I feel like modern day actors and stuff, there are not that many icons in the current, like, pantheon of actors who are mm-hmm. young-ish, mm-hmm. right? Like, no one would be kind of like, wow, they're so cool or whatever like you know people when they heard his voice as Darth Vader like oh man that dude's so cool mm-hmm. listen to his voice he sounds so great I can't think of any can, can you I can't think of anybody who's like oh man here's this young up and other than us you know, uh, uh, I mean obviously cover. obviously yeah. Uh, yeah. we're, we're like, just oh, we're just shining God. stars that are you know blinded by celestial clouds you know yeah the, well, the clouds are the internet like we've got to part the clouds of the internet so mm. people can discover us finally nice and realize us for the great talents that we are yes you know it's not just these amazingly sexy faces it's these voices yeah. as well yeah yeah we can only be so handsome and we can only have such compelling voices right like there's <laughs> limitations right like eventually it has to like there has to be a cap to it there has to be i think that's why yeah you know and i think that's why our podcast is like struggling because it's too much amazingness it's like too sexy it's too handsome it's like god oh, these guys are too much well we... you know what is too much francis and and i you know i, I guess before i say that I, we should say we should say that you should never judge a movie by his trailer but speaking of going too far speaking of going what the fuck 
What was that uh, Minecraft trailer? I, I I watched it without sound. I was too lazy to reach over and power on my receiver. Yeah. But it didn't look like it had much to do with Minecraft. And then why the fuck is Jack Black in it? He was in it from the beginning. Like that was the that's the draw. He's the draw. He's the reason why you want to watch the movie. I played Minecraft. Minecraft wasn't an overweight old dude. Is this Minecraft forty years later? <laughs> it's it's Minecraft. It's it's a movie that didn't learn a lesson from any of the successful video game movies like Sonic or Super Mario Brothers. It learned nothing from hmm. those movies. It's just like we're gonna do this thing. We're gonna use probably like hip memes and stuff. We're gonna say Riz and we're gonna say you know whatever. We're gonna say no cap and stuff like that and. And people are going to be like, yeah, that was... By the time it comes out, it's like, yeah, that nobody says that stuff anymore. <laughs> nobody says the stuff that Jack Black is saying or that Jason Momoa is saying. Nobody says that stuff. Like, stop. So, yeah, they, 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 they got the wrong lessons. It's all. I, I just... I don't know. It, I, I don't even know how you, how you would do a Minecraft movie unless you were on a lot of drugs. Because, like, unless unless there's some sort of port, you know, Marvel shiny portal circle thing that they walk through and then they end up in the Minecraft universe. Unless they go up and punch a tree, like I'm not sticking around. You got to punch a tree to make a stick. I mean, that makes total sense. There was a scene. There was a scene where Jason Momoa hits like these blocky materials and it turns into something mm. like he's with a hammer like Minecraft. <laughs> well, <laughs> look, it's like Minecraft. Look, it's like Minecraft. So it's going to be just, look, it's, it's going to be the big bang version of, of Minecraft and just pander to every Minecraft fan that's out there. Oh, look, he used the red stone. I'm pointing, I'm pointing at Josh because he has it right. He's right. It is. It's the, it's the, Big Bang Theory of, 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 of video game. It's pixels too, essentially. Mm. Mm. Minus, minus <laughs> apropos, server. apropos being being Minecraft. That's that's. Point. <laughs> that was good. Um, I don't have a whole lot else on here. Um. What else we got on here? Uh, I, all right, so the, you know, it's the, the the stupid part of the show, or well, it's a really dumb part of the show. All everything else has been pretty dumb. Uh, I wasn't looking for this particular item. I was just cleaning my 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 possessions up, getting rid of some things, making room. Um, why am I still hanging on to speakers for the computer? I don't know. Like, you know, the old speakers that, like, they would let you know your phone's going to ring before your phone rang? I still have some of those. Like, why do I have I, I don't know why I'm hanging on to these. Okay. So, I, you know, I'm just kind of purging. I, I did some purging of, of some of my things. And I opened up this. You Marie kondo I did what? Marie Kondo. You know Marie Kondo? I don't know. She, she's the lady that told everyone to get rid of things that didn't bring joy to your life. And oh. throw them away. I mean, I had that attitude with socks. As you freeze. I'm frozen? No, oh, you froze a little oh, you're bit. You're not too. frozen. No. You are. But anyway, at least you're smiling. Talk about it. Uh, that, if you can hear me. Yeah, I can. So I, I have that issue with socks. I, I, I buy a new set of socks basically every six months. Socks? Yeah, socks. Unless they're like, you know, fun printed socks that you don't wear that often, but like your everyday socks, I'd change, I'd, I'd throw them all out every six months, basically six, six to nine months. Okay. Um, right. if there's a, if, if a hole shows up in my sock, it gets thrown away. 
you're supposed to like throw away like your underwear and your socks every like year or something and get we're <laughs> we're men francis we will hang on to our underwear until there's nothing left it's just the elastic saying. band and that's it and you're like no they're still good i'm not saying that's what we're yeah, yeah you're not wrong that's very true i'm sure the women do the same thing but women's underwear is a lot more fun so they have like a lot more of it that's true that's true i mean our underwear could be fun i guess we just wanted to be adventurous you know no there's like <laughs> weird like superhero printed boxer shorts and stuff like there's like there's like animated shorts like you can wear underwear that has like pictures on it of of jack daniels or like of you know like there's like weird stuff like that there's like weird underwear like that if you mm. want if you really want fun underwear you can get the kind that has like product placement on them <laughs> if you really want to put condom on here um <laughs> exactly it's it's a pair of boxers with a built-in rubber that would be disgusting that's like the most disgusting thing i think i've said all week actually you're frozen at least you're frozen on a good funny picture uh but all right so i, I was cleaning things up and open up this drawer and as i make my way to the bottom of the drawer getting rid of speakers to receivers I don't have anymore and no need to have other speakers. I, 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 I see that kind of squarish shaped thing, chrome on the backside. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? Pick it up. It's my old iPod video with its little one and a quarter inch screen or one inch screen, whatever it was like two two forty, you know, resolution but I, I was like oh that's really cool I haven't I haven't seen this thing in forever I don't even remember the last time I used it of, of course the battery is not going to be good right now I'm going to have to if I'm interested enough I'm going to have to figure out a way to charge it and I, I set it aside and finished my purging threw stuff away recycled some things and I, I, it was sitting there. I was like, you know what? I need to. I need to see what's on here. The curiosity is killing me. So I go to the Amazon's. I order a, a cheap thirty-pin cord. Shows up the next day. Charge the thing all day. Fire it up, only to discover there's absolutely no music. There's zero videos on the on the uh, on the iPad or iPod. Um, but what was on there? were all the podcasts that I was listening to and had just updated in January of 2012. So it's kind of cool. Kind of cool to see, you know, what was I listening to back then? Just a few years into discovering and starting my own podcast. So it was, it was, it, it was kind of cool to, to look back and, and see, you know, what, what did I listen to? What was, what was all on here? What was I, you know, what was my jam? Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything with this iPod. I couldn't get it recognized by anything. I couldn't load me. I, I suppose I could probably load music onto it if I could access it. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was just kind of a fun trip down nostalgia boulevard for a quick minute to be like, oh, well, that, that's cool. I, I'm not s terribly surprised. I mean, even if there was music on there, I wouldn't have been probably surprised by it because I'm listening to the same shit I was listening to in 2012 for the most part. I'm listening to the same music I was listening to since high school. <laughs> Just a lot more EDM now. L learn from the toy discussion. Keep it. It'll be worth something someday. It, yeah, it very well may. It very well may. It's in fairly good shape. The back of, I mean, every iPad of, of that Chrome back design got scratched the shit out of. It was just, it was inevitable. Um, but the face, the face looks pretty good. There you go. It still functions. The, the battery hadn't expanded or anything like that. I mean, I'm sure now that I charged it, it probably will, but, you know. 
You have to overcharge it. You can't just charge it once yeah. and it's going to be. That's true. Well, well I mean, it, it's been, what, what is that, 12 years? You know, not charging something for 12 years and then hitting it with a full charge? Mm-hmm. It might not. It might not hold the charge as long, but I, I true. Don't think you're bloating the battery. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, but yeah, that uh, that really covers everything I wrote down for this week. Kind of a little extra juice for not being here last week. We, if you paid attention, I told you what I do for a living. It'd probably come up a hundred other times, but I try not to talk about it. It doesn't always work. And if, when it's the most interesting part of your day, it's kind of, you know, you want to you want to talk about some of the things, but some I legally can't, and uh, some it just wouldn't be interesting. I guess. I guess. Yeah. You'd have a whole other show if you could talk about some of the stuff that you're talking to me about. I know, right? A whole other show. Oh, man. Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, you know what, folks? The pre-show, the warm-up that we do, sometimes they, they could be Jerry Springer episodes. If you only had a Patreon. If I only had a, if I only hit complete on the Patreon thing, which was started a year and a half ago, so I should probably just build a new one. But, you know, I'll, I'll have to work on that next time I have a day off. Which isn't yeah. on my birthday, which is bullshit. I have to work on my you birthday. For, you didn't ask for it off, though, did you? I didn't. I didn't. But I was kind of hoping that, you know, since they have all that information anyway, that they would be like, oh, hey. I always work on my, I think this is my first year where I'm going to actually ask for that day off. I always work on my birthday, but I'm like, it's on a Friday. Last well, last and last and to be fair, my birthday is on Friday the thirteenth this year, so I, uh, I might as well right. I might as well accept it. If it was a full moon as well, it would probably be even cooler. But I don't believe it is. Yeah, no kidding. That's but exciting. Friday the thirteenth, I figure it might as well go to work because likelihood of craziness and adventure will be there okay. all the crazies are going to be out on, on friday 13th. yeah you're gonna, you're gonna have a fun time uh though i do kind of <clears throat> excuse me i do kind of want to go to a tattoo shop and get a free friday the 13th tattoo but I'm at the same sure. time at the same time I, I have issues with picking things off a wall let's put 13. <laughs> Right here on my neck. Right on your neck. Yeah. yeah. Big bold letter. Big bold numbers. Just Big, right there. Like right. old English style numbers. Oh, God. Yeah. Old English should never have been a thing. Uh, Francis, I was, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a tattoo story. When I was getting all of my tattoos, mm-hmm. before I got my first one, I went to somebody and had my last name done up in old English, like three inch old English letters that I planned to put across my shoulders. Oh, in the back. On my back. Okay. And then I started thinking about it and I'm like, why would I put my own name on my back? (laughs) I don't play sports. I would say that's a jersey. That's a jersey. Yeah. yeah. And I'm also, you know, I mean, I'm proud, I guess, but I'm not that fucking proud. Like, so, nah, no, no, we'll, we'll skip that. And I got a cobra put on my back instead. So, yeah, I think you're better off. <laughs> you, you dodged a bullet. Yeah. That's like putting thug life on your ch- on your stomach, right? Like that's the equivalent of thug life or something on your stomach. Like, well, I mean, one one of my good friends growing up, he had his last name tattooed across his back, and I just thought it was fucking cool. But the older I got, I was just like, yeah, I mean, it's it's cool, it's cool, but I don't, it's it's not for me. Yeah. I don't really know if I got another tattoo, other than a free. Friday the thirteenth, tattoo that you know it would be like the number thirteen or a 
black cat or a Jason, you know, Voorhees, you know, mask, something like that. Something spooky Friday the 13th. And they're all small. They're like an inch square or something like that. Um, but I think if I did, because well, tattoos today in, in today's, in, in my brain as of today, represent a time in my life where I had extra income. Because they all cost money. Like, I got a lot of them on super barter hookups where I only had to tip people for the most part. But my tips were like $200. So basically paying for the tattoo either way. Um, But I think I would want to just go balls out and just do a full sleeve of Street Fighter. Or take my right arm that only has supposedly Chinese, though I think Korean, um, kanji, for lack of a better term, on my arm, and cover that up with Decepticon stuff. That would probably be the, the two things that I would, that I would, if I had the money, the extra income to do so. Go to a convention. They're not going to do a sleeve at a convention. No, but they'll start one for yeah. cheap. That's possible. So, that is possible. Oh, yeah. I haven't gone to, having, even though I didn't get a tattoo, I have been to several tattoo conventions because other people like tattoos and I mm-hmm. knew artists and stuff like that. Like, I had, I had, I had a weird life, you know, <laughs> where I knew, like, a bunch of weird artists. And, like, sure. Weird, like, pre, pre-podcasting. All this sure. Stuff. Anyway, I uh, went to my first tattoo expo. And they were giving it away practically for free, like for free almost, mm. not really. And they were good, like good stuff. But they did it for the business so that right. you'll finish the sleeve at their studio, right, right. Or you'll finish whatever art they started that normally costs X amount of money. They're like, well, we're gonna do it for fifteen bucks or twenty bucks. But if you want the rest, yeah, you you want it color and shaded. Yeah, you're gonna have to come yeah. in. But I'll do the outline right now. Right, right. Yeah, right. They'll yeah. do something. They'll do something that's cool and elaborate, but they're not going to make. They're not going to finish it. Right. Unless you pay up front. Sure. They, they might. But yeah. Uh, one uh, of our yeah. one of our old uh, podcasting cohorts uh, that I met up with in Seattle for Emerald City, he got his uh, arm tattooed at the convention. Nice. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I was like. Or, you know, we're just walking through the convention. The, the unmistakable sound of a tattoo machine going off. It's like, what is, where is this happening? We need to go investigate. Yep. Uh, I think, I think if, uh, you know, I, I got, you know, str- strapped to a chair, you know, and a tattoo machine pointed at my head and said, you have to pick something immediately right now. I would probably go with the Cobra um, Decepticon combo logo. Nice. That's good. That'd be good. That'd yeah. Because I've always, I've always liked that logo. I think it's pretty badass. I have four words for you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> no, you do not send me money to get a fucking tattoo. Don't do that. Because I'll send that money right I back to you. I already sent you. Already, already, you sent you stuff from your list. You're not getting anything. You're not getting anything more. Oh, all right, good. And hey, thank you, by the way, for making lists. It, I have, I have a public Amazon list. It's there not for people to buy me things, but you know, I guess if it's public, it, I'm not going to say no. You have two. You have two lists. That are public. I have I have two lists of yours. I have a birthday list and a regular wish list. And I and I, I and think I that that birthday, birthday man, that birthday list must have been from years ago. Oh uh, well, expect old stuff then. That's fine. Okay, uh, I'm like, probably wants stuff from the birthday list. He really doesn't want. I mean, unless list. unless, I mean, maybe I gave you access to it. I don't know. You did. Okay. This well. was a while ago. Because I asked you. I asked you like four or five years ago. It's like, well, I want to get something for you for your birthday. And oh. You're like, oh, I have these lists. And stuff. Oh, well, yeah. if, I mean, if, well, then, yeah. All right, well, whatever. Um, 
Thank I, you I have it. I have it up as a public thing, just and I, I, I know I could just go in and change it, but it's really there just as a thing for me to remind myself, like, hey, look into this again. You know, you're such a cam girl. What? Oh, cam girls always <laughs> yes, like Amazon yes. Netflix. You're such a cam girl. Hey. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you kind of are, I guess. We're I mean, both cam girls. I'm not wearing pants right now. You want to see? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see, you got to have to call this number. I'm I'm naked under the shirt. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is just kind of speaking yeah. of cam girl stuff. Uh, I knew a chick. So 20 years ago, I did loss prevention for clothing retail giants and this this lady would always come into the store oh and and do you remember the line juicy you remember that line i remember juicy yeah, okay. right around the butt right so she was a juicy girl and she would always come into this retail giant clothing store and purchase things with uh gift cards never paid in cash and after about five hundred dollars, it was like okay, I'm gonna look into this because it was five hundred dollars within the same month or whatever, whatever the cues were, and started investigating the gift cards and where they came from, how they were purchased, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm finding that these gift cards are being purchased all over the country. I'm like okay, interesting. That's really interesting. But is that interesting enough to, you know, further this investigation? Because it's all legal. It's just person apparently gets a lot of gift cards. So I remember closing the investigation on this person. And at the same time, I was in the process of quitting smoking cigarettes. This is all will make sense. So I'm breaking down at work and I'm like, I'm going to go smoke a cigarette shouldn't but i'm gonna go do it so i went outside smoking a cigarette not realizing the juicy girl was in the store had done her shopping had done her gift card purchase and was making her way out saw me smoking asked me for a cigarette now juicy girl was moderately cute and i also saw it as a great opportunity to to investigate directly to the person doing this without you know, seeming like I'm asking questions. Right. And in the next five minutes, I found out this girl dropped out of high school, had her own place, supported herself by camming and doing custom things, stuffs, yeah. pictures and whatnot. Right. And, I'm, and the whole time I'm going, wow, all I want to know is where you're getting these gift cards from. But now I know, and I know everything else about your life. I didn't want to know. And, uh, so, you know, through the power of horniness and attraction or something, I don't know. Somehow, okay. a few visits later, numbers got exchanged and realized that she lived across the street from one of my good friends. Went to go hang out one night and she took a call to do some cam stuff and mentioned that I was there to the person and there was an offer made to be a willing part to be a participant. And I said, no, despite it probably being a lot of fun, but Could have been a prop. there was, uh, that's what she needed was a prop. Yeah. But the, the yeah. fact that there was a lot of illicit drug use happening, I chose yeah. to not participate. It was all, it all came from bumming of a cigarette. This is very odd. I, I, a lot of stuff happens. I mean, you know, it's a vice that really p brings people together. You're, you're not I'm wrong. Really right. You're not wrong. I mean, the, the, some of the closest friends I had in high school were all fellow smokers. You know, friends. <clears throat> yeah. Quote, Especially unquote. nowadays because... It's, it's so hard to do, right? You have to be in designated places. You know, fewer and fewer people are doing it now. Well, but, maybe. 
But in my current profession, you know how many adults, full grown ass adults, I've had to put my announcer voice on and belittle people for vaping in these establishments in which I protect merchandise from being stolen. It's just, it's just the water vapor. What do you want, man? It's, it's the water vapor, dude. I'm, you're not wrong. You're not wrong there. But people don't want to smell it. And at the end of the day, you're not, it's still technically falls under the category of smoking. Yeah, it's illegal to vape. Indoors. So it is illegal to vape yeah. indoors. And about, I'd say three times a week while, you know, patrolling my, my establishment and their, their products that I have to approach full grown ass people and be like, don't do that here. You should, you should, you know better, you know better. And then usually they scream and yell, call me names. And I told one person, you're got to try harder to hurt my feelings. Cause I've already heard that six times a day. You unoriginal bastard. <laughs> they need their fix. They need their hit. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Uh, yeah, all, all I'll say about stopping merchandise from leaving a store that's unpaid for doesn't matter what it is. It might as well, I mean, you're, anyway, it doesn't matter what the product is that's being saved. Yeah. yeah, You get the same reaction from the people that get caught stealing. Whether it was 20 years ago, working for a retail clothing giant. Or today for a retail giant, an an undescript retail giant. Uh, One thing that has lots of, lots of, lots has changed in 20 years. But one thing that has remained the same is when people get caught shoplifting, they're mad at you for catching them because they suck at shoplifting. I like that the, the moral of the story is get good. I actually told a guy that. I said the reason, don't be mad at me because you suck at shoplifting. Get better at it. I, mean, I guess, I guess, yeah. I mean, I mean, there, there's some truth to that. I, you know, if anyone would know, you would know that there's some truth to that. I told, I told one person that we had him pointed out before he even entered the store. Because he had guilt written all over his face as soon as he got out of his car. It's just, unfortunately, fortunately, shoplifters, regardless of what they're shoplifting, make it super obvious. It is, this is Colorado, technically a high desert. People forget that because it's, you know, suburbia and shit but it's technically a high desert it's been 93 plus for like the last month you walk into a a store regardless of the type of store wearing a hoodie with your hood up and a face mask and a beanie you're gonna get fingered and not in the good way (laughs) you're like you're like one step maybe half a step away from doing an entire show based on exactly on what you do because you're just giving it, you know if, so much if, about if there was a way if there was a way for me to you do a body camera and get away with it like the legal part of it i would do it yeah but it'd be too much work That's... to do and i'd have to buy a program to actually like censor faces Put the little blocky blur, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Blur on them, yeah. It'd just be too much work, and I don't. I have, I have, hundred videos of dash cam footage I want to put out that I've only edited like four or five clips of, because I don't have, I don't have the damn technology <laughs> to to do what I want. I don't have the programs to do what I want. Start your Patreon. Yeah, yeah. That's what it keeps going back to, I guess, huh? Yeah. 
But like five bucks every month. You're like, I can afford this now. And that's true. Go and show you the funny videos of my dash cam and my body cam. Look at this. <laughs> and get a Patreon so I can buy myself some body armor. Right. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> Or like a stab, uh, stab proof vest or something. Cause you know, you know, when you're watching movies, Francis, or maybe a TV show and a knife fight happens. And during the knife fight, there's a lot of jump cuts and, and exciting music. And then someone gets stabbed and they usually like run off holding their gut or something. That doesn't happen in real life. Two months ago, I tried stopping somebody who pulled a fucking four-inch knife on me. And yeah. guess what, Francis? There was no director with four cameras doing jump cuts. And there was no music. You know what I heard? A knife scraping across the, shirt, the chest on my shirt. And the, the knife hitting glass as I fought it away. And then jumped six feet back so I wouldn't get stabbed. <laughs> but yeah. who knew who knew Francis that watching kung fu movies my whole life and telling everybody for the last 30 years that I'm a ninja that I actually knew how to fight a knife off <laughs> so there you're now hearing some of the stuff that we, t that we talk about yeah you know. yeah but my, my job is really boring and it has moments of excitement it's like hunting i imagine that's what hunting is like hunting is just a lot of walking sitting around and being quiet and then all of a sudden there's like it's really exciting i guess i've never hunted i guess so i mean yeah, technically i guess i do every day but like hunting i was gonna say it, it it's not like it's not like every week you have you, you don't have a new story for me about your work you know? that's true like that is true. Always a new story. Always. Well, and it, 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 you guys also have to remember, I'm still kind of like in the honeymoon period of my new, my new career. You know. It's hard to. Okay. Yeah. Sure. But the stuff that you encounter, I mean, it's just never mind. Anyway, <laughs> it's like yeah. It's it's just it's just amazing, the the links and depths people will go to. To not pay for the merchandise they selected. Like, yeah. Do you remember when you were a kid, Francis? Mm -hmm. And you saw the, the fire the fire alarm there? And there was the, the always the urban myth, the urban legend that if you pulled the, the fire alarm, it would spray your hand with ink. So the fire department would know who... Okay, that's, that's the shit people told us. So we were terrified to pull the fire alarm. Transfer that to emergency exits. You would never go out an emergency exit unless it was an emergency, not shoplifters. <laughs> well, there's an alarm. There are alarms. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. The, without getting into a lot of things, they're harder to subdue when they run out those doors. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is again. This is, you could, you could have every every week instead of the stuff we normally talk about on here. Just talk about your job, really, and it would fill the hour. It, it, it I mean, it would. It would. Yeah. Maybe maybe we could do a special episode of that or something. No, no, because <clears throat> you're. Tr I mean, even though you're failing at it, you're trying to keep some cave, protect some cave. I'm doing pretty good. I mean. You're giving away a lot of information. I mean, yes, but, you know. Every every few weeks, every week now, every time you come back, it's like, I'll tell you a little bit more about what I do. <laughs> a little bit more I mean, about what I do. To be fair, though, Francis, I, I did throw it out there. I told everybody what I did on here when I when I switched yeah. over to this. And I I said it. I was like, this is what I'm doing. And I'm not really going to say much more from that. And I've, yes, I know that I've let things out in this episode. I pretty much let it all out, but I haven't told you yeah. for who. Well, yeah, you don't, you still, yeah. You could, I, mean, like, I mean, if you listen, if you're listening, you can figure it out. 
but not really because you, you don't ever say the items in which so that's exactly. the thing so exactly. it's a little bit harder because you know it could be any and plus it could mean anything because there's several there's, there's several places actually more than several there's like a bunch of places that do this type of thing so it's like it's hard to pinpoint anything right right it's so like GameStop can you imagine? It's a that, oh my god, that would have made my three years at GameStop that much more fun if I was actually able to like stop. But here's the thing, though, Francis, and 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 somebody out there that works for GameStop, you know, if you're listening, correct me. But in the three years I was at GameStop, there wasn't really any external theft. It was all internal. Whether it was time fraud, giving away your discount. Or just straight up stealing games, like it's like there isn't a lot of theft at liquor stores. I'm sure there is, but you don't hear about it. You only hear about liquor getting stolen from grocery stores or Targets, you know, that have liquor stores attached to them or something like that. Liquor stores get rob robbed, I guess. Is less shoplift; they get robbed. You do it's more for the money than for the liquor. For yeah, sure. but it's it's. Uh, let me tell you, Francis, it's a big change <laughs> working from the marijuana industry to stopping people from not paying for merchandise. It's it's a culture shock, to say the least. Well, well it's two completely different types of work. Yeah. So yes, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Yeah, the the, the days of taking lunch and getting your head right at lunch. Those days are gone. <laughs> Long gone. Yeah, I suppose. You can't really, can't really, uh, can't really do this job if you're stoned. No. But you can package gummies all day when you're stoned. You could sell weed while you're stoned all day. That's easy. Anyway, look at that. Hour and 42 minutes. We gave you extra, extra juice this week. I got to go to work in the morning. So we're going to end this thing here. Francis, okay. you know what time it is. It's the time for you to talk about all the things you did to make things synergetic in your life and for people to make it easy to find you on the internets. Hey, it's it's kind of like a one-stop shop. If you if you're really into Francis, you know where to find him. If you're really into me, good luck. <laughs> Cuz my shit's all over the place because synergy, I didn't know what that meant. I thought it was the devil's energy drink. Nothing? I don't get nothing. That was funny, Francis. I've given it's myself funny. Uh, but yeah, you can find me at 303 underscore ninja on the Twitter, 303 ninja on the Instagram. You could uh, voicemail us, text, call into the show maybe one day if I ever remember to hook my phone up to the receiver. 314-764-7631. It spells out POI pod one. I tried. I tried. There's some synergy there, kind of. Twitter. You can find us at POI Podcast. Uh, YouTube. Same thing. All the other audio places. That's where it gets a little tricky. Message me. I'll let you know. You, you use the text message feature at 7647. Or what is it? 314-764-7631 text me where you could find uh, the audio versions and I'll let you know or just go to YouTube it's there the music's ending the show's ending for this week we'll be back next time bye bye